everyone and welcome. In this video we're learning all about the top mount exhaust on McLaren's 600LT and 600LT Spider and why it's actually quite a brilliant solution on McLaren's part. I had the fortunate opportunity to speak with the 600LT Spider's chief engineer and was able to learn all about it. Now obviously McLaren isn't the first company to implement a top mount exhaust. However, when analyzing the benefits of doing so, it's important to consider why the changes were made for each specific vehicle. In this case, altering the design of the McLaren 570S to make improvements for the 600LT. So in this video, we'll be covering a good number of questions regarding the advantages a top mount exhaust provides, including how does a top mount exhaust affect weight? How does a top mount exhaust affect powertrain cooling? How does a top mount exhaust affect aerodynamics? Additionally, will the exhaust interfere with the rear wing's ability to provide downforce? And what about rain? Will your exhaust fill up with water when it sits outside in a storm? Starting off, weight is actually a real advantage of a top mount exhaust. In the 570S, the exhaust comes out each of the sides of the V8 engine, travels back up and over the transmission housing and then back down where it splits between the two sides before exiting the rear of the vehicle. On the 600LT, this path is significantly shorter and cuts off when the exhaust routes over the transmission straight out the top. Not only does this reduce back pressure within the exhaust, helping the 600LT's additional 30 horsepower over the 570S flow more freely, but in exhaust piping alone it saves 8 kilograms. A further 4.6 kilograms is saved as a result of better cooling characteristics. In total, 12.6 or about 28 pounds are saved through a revised exhaust. So how are they able to pull weight and improve powertrain cooling? Well, in the 570S, the bumper has fans at each corner to help blow out the hot air generated by the exhaust. This hot air pools within the bumper and soaks the area in heat. The electric fans, weighing 4.6 kilograms, are no longer needed with the top mount exhaust and the rear of the car remains cooler. Looking at the overall airflow path, fresh air enters the sides of the vehicle, where it then filters through an airbox, is passed through the compressor side of a turbocharger, is routed up through an air-to-water intercooler, then routed down through the intake manifold where it splits between the cylinders, eventually flowing out the exhaust through the turbine, then routed to the back of the car where it passes through a catalytic converter before finally exiting the top mounted pipes. So what about aerodynamics? Well, this is one of the big advantages of the 600LT's design. Where the 570S had rear exiting exhaust to the sides of the diffuser, the top mount exhaust on the 600LT's design means there's no interference with the diffuser's design. As a result of no rear exit exhausts, in addition to the 600LT's extended length, the larger unrestricted diffuser of the 600LT is a major part of what allows for its additional 100 kilograms or 220 pounds of downforce produced at 155 miles per hour versus the 570S. Now obviously the larger front splitter and rear wing help contribute to the overall downforce as well. Which might make you wonder, won't the top mount exhaust disrupt the airflow traveling over the wing, thus interfering with downforce potential? What I was surprised to learn is that it actually has very little effect, and that's actually because the center of the wing isn't all that useful in the first place. The sides of the wing receive uninterrupted, clean airflow as a result of their location and the shape of the car's body. This is where the bulk of the wing's downforce is produced. The center of the wing, located behind the driver's compartment, receives more turbulent airflow as a result of the air's departure from the roof line. McLaren states this is actually quite common for rear wings, and that on many cars the sides of the wings produce the bulk of the benefits, hence why you'll see some cars with rear wings and aerodynamic features that don't stretch the entire width of the car. Since the exhaust is dumping air into turbulent air, it doesn't play a significant role in reducing the car's downforce by interrupting the wing's airflow. But what about heat? Well, you'll notice the matte coloring of the middle section of the wing. This isn't purely an aesthetic touch. It's an application of Cerakote, a ceramic coating that protects the carbon fiber wing from the heat of the exhaust when you're running flat out. Okay, so now let's say your car is parked outside and it starts to dump rain. Is your exhaust going to fill up with water? McLaren actually has an in-house room, dubbed the Monsoon Room, where they can test for things like this, dumping an extraordinary amount of water onto the car in a short period of time. You'll notice if you look inside the exhaust, there are slits and holes built into it, designed specifically to prevent the exhaust from filling up with water. It simply drains out if rain were to enter. 
Also worth mentioning, the valves you see in the exhaust are only for the European spec car, which has noise constraints. The US-based car will not have these valves in the exhaust. Cue the comments about California's exhaust law limiting cars to 95 decibels, which, many of you may be surprised to learn, has actually been in effect since 2003. Now, finally, there's a reason that's not quite as objective as the others for having a top mount exhaust, as it relates to the joys of driving. With the rear glass able to go down regardless of if the top is up or not, this opens up the cabin to the roar of the exhaust directly behind the driver's head. Of course, top down provides even more access. And while McLaren isn't the first company that comes to mind when I think about a great sounding exhaust, the downshifts and upshifts are certainly a joy to hear, with ignition cuts causing crackling and pops. The experience is quite different for your ears than driving the sibling 570S, which makes the 600LT all the more special. And ultimately, that played a major role in the decision for the 600LT to go to a top mount exhaust versus the 570S. LT, it's the long tail. Part of its DNA on top of improvements in weight, aero, and power is to offer more driver engagement. And on that, it delivers. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.